Hello everyone, welcome to this week's Draw with Dorian. Today we're going to pick up on where we started or left off last week with some graphic design. And quick update, I'm still working with Patrick Tabonas. Let me check if that's all sharing correctly, yes. <laughs> so Patrick is a friend of mine, he's a sculptor 
and the painter. Here's some of his work. And I was with him the last week. I'm at my parents' house today, and tonight I'm gonna go back. It's a two hour drive to the mountains, and I'll spend another two weeks with him preparing his house for an exhibition in early October. This is the house. The wall that's over here, that's the east facade, it looks like this. And my job is to decorate these two windows at the bottom, left and right. And I'll paint a decorative pattern across all the way to here and then going around the entire building. And last time we talked about the car design. So about the window here. And this is what we did. I didn't get too far in the actual design work. Um, there were some Photoshop layout things and comments about presentation that I hope were helpful. Uh, if you didn't watch last week's episode, it's about the design of this window here. So we tried different approaches to the shape design. These are all just started, different, different starting methods or processes. I had made these four designs before the session. So Patrick already saw these. And then we had the idea to work with photographic textures or photographs of his artwork as a background to the N. This is the logo of his studio. So I showed him this image, these variations, and he liked, I think, 7 and 11. So they're just marble and rock textures. 10, 9, 5 over here are photographs of his artwork, of his sculptures. But we're probably going to go with a photograph of just rock texture. So my design variations, 1 through 4, and the ones that we started last week, are not going to be used, but they might be used for something else. We never know. But this is, as I'm documenting this project in real time, these things happen. So I'm not going to continue with what we started last week but I'll continue with what I have to do for this project, which is the facade on the window, around the windows. Uh, I wanted to show you this though. We had some other ideas for the car, giving a, a background to the bottom half of the car. Uh, these five and six have patterns going across the entire height of the car. Looks like number one or number three are the favorites at the moment. We're still waiting for what the budget or what that is going to cost. So we're not sure if that's going to be possible. Um, we might do number four, just the logo here and up here. But that's where that is at right now. I did the business card. Still some final deci decisions having to be made there. But at the moment, that's the front and that's the back of the business card. Just so you see that design language of, of all these different pieces that I'm all working on at the same time. And here's the facade and the pattern is going to go across here and then around the windows there will be these ceramic elements and hand-drawn fresco painting. So you see the size of the pattern that's uh, going across and then the size of the ceramic elements here. I've built a 3D model to better understand um, and to make sure that the scales are working for everything. So I went and measured the window, the whole side of the building, and translated it into this 3D model in Blender. And then I'm taking this into Photoshop. And an important design element here, it's hard to see here, so let's go to Photoshop or maybe the picture here. Like on the other four windows, there are these half arches, right? So we're probably going to incorporate that also on these two windows. It's tricky because the pattern is going to go quite close, but that's my challenge to figure out something that looks good. Today will be a short session, maybe half an hour. And 
if you want to follow along, I would recommend doing what I'll show you in a second. So here's a photograph of that window. Then there's the half arc above it. And the pattern, which I had to center and make sure it, like when it repeats, it lines up properly with the windows. That was an interesting process. And we're, we, we've landed on something like this, which should be to scale. And I think it works pretty well. And here are the ceramic corners, which right now they're in clay. They still have to be fired, I think is the word. I'm not sure. Burnt, fired, cooked in the oven, baked. And they'll change color to more terracotta color. So this is right now my estimation of what the final color will be. We might paint them also. I'm not sure yet. But what I'm doing today is draw, design these spaces here between the ceramic corners. So if you want to follow along, you can draw something like this. Just a box with a box inside. Indicate where the corners will be. And then you'll draw in these four sections between just playing with shapes. Drawing shapes, finding a design that feels harmonious, interesting, well balanced. And it's just practicing designing. When you're drawing a body, all that design decision work comes in as well if you're doing a portrait if you're doing a creature design it doesn't matter it's all design and for me right now this is a job i'm working on and i thought it would be fun to share it for me the design work is create a window decoration so let's see i have about 20 minutes and you can get the, the proportions roughly from looking at this Again, for you, it'll be something like this, if you want to draw along. Otherwise, you can just watch as well. So Photoshop recently got this symmetry function, which I'm going to use. I have a layer here, which is hard to see right now. I'm going to make it darker. So it's this frame, and I set lock transparency, so I'm just drawing inside that frame. And because symmetry is on, whatever I do on one side is going to go over on the other side. I'll have to mirror it top to bottom, but that's not an issue. If you haven't seen last week's episode, this might be a little bit... Um, well, you'll miss some context maybe, but I am looking at the design choices that Patrick has made here in the ceramic pattern and everything that I've talked about last week. We gathered some reference and that is still kind of in my mind. So let's see how much we can do in 20 minutes. I think from looking at the ceramic, an important part is that there is this border that's going through everything. So I'm gonna draw this. And I'm sketching, so things will be loose, but not too messy. Um, I'll see if I'll do the bottom at the same time, but probably I'm just going to work on the top here and then mirror it down later on. Okay, so I see this big empty space in the corner, so I'll pick that up. And right now it's totally intuitive. I'm just making shapes, and as I'm making shapes, I'm kind of creating problems for myself to solve. I will create imbalances, I'll create things I don't like, and I'll create things that I do like. And then it's about figuring out how to Oh, 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 did I unmute myself? Yes, good. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure that I wasn't talking with a muted microphone. Um, right, I'm creating things I like and I'm creating things I don't like. 
for you if you're drawing just create random shapes and then you'll see things that you can build on and things you want to fix or change I think I'm gonna keep everything abstract because there are heads in here so if I add more body parts it might be strange I was thinking of doing eyes up here but I think it's gonna be too weird so probably won't do that but if I'm doing several variations one could be with eyes if you remember from last week also big medium small right now I'm thinking big I'm making big shapes I'm playing with this round and angular contrast okay something that's happening here in the clay is that there are these islands that are almost like little flowers petals with circles inside so I will fill some of my shapes here with these circles just very loosely indicating them now and then I'll flesh it out more that will make sure that what I'm drawing now has a relationship with what is in the clay cover all of it with this kind of shape but just enough to relate everything together then there are also these uh, thick bands running through let me see can I draw on top no these kinds of shapes that have thickness and also are going underneath other parts so I want to play with some of that, bring some of this design element into what I'm doing here. And for me, this is fun. Like now it's a mess of sketchy lines, but we're going to make it more and more concrete, more and more resolved. So where do I see a hint of something that could become a little I don't know what to call it, a sausage shape that has thickness. Maybe this one could go on top and then another one goes on top of it. This feels a bit strange right now. It's bumping into the edge here and bumping into the edge here, just going straight across. So I'm not sure how Patrick is solving that. So I'm going to look at the clay again with the particular goal of trying to figure out what else I can do instead of just running into the edge. How is Patrick doing that here? I see this one is following along the edge and then curving around. Aha, now that I look closer, there's also this pattern. Are there any lines coming off of this? I guess there's this one. Right, yeah, so this has actually the origin here. This maybe flows up here. So these elements are quite important and I should definitely put them in as well. Maybe one here, more or less here. Because symmetry is on, it's going to happen on both sides at the same time, which is quite nice. And instead of going down, 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 I will go to the bottom now to make sure we're meeting somewhere in the middle and not end up scrunched up at the end. Okay, I was lucky, I think <laughs> that worked out pretty well. So now, 
maybe instead of being over here, this shape can start here. And up here, I don't know if we can run along. Yeah, some of these shapes, we get things like this happening. I just realized I was on the wrong layer. So I'm going to merge these down. here going around the island of bubbles or circles I can create a shape like this I just noticed this which is quite pointy and then round so let me see if I can build in one of these kinds of shapes and you can do the same if you're drawing on your own where would there not be an opportunity for a shape like that? Maybe this one. Ah, <laughs> jumped on the other layer again. If there's time, which I hope, I'm going to do a second pass on top. This is something I like doing. I will load the opacity. So this, which is my sketch, becomes very transparent. Make a new layer on top. And then we can draw more cleanly, more confidently, more precisely where these shapes are actually going to go. Right. But we need to resolve a little bit more the overall design. <laughs> There's eight minutes to go. This is a speed designing exercise. Here I'm breaking the contour and I'm not sure if he's doing that. So let me check. Yeah, a little bit. See, there are some of these organic forms or shapes going out. So if I do that also in the drawing, it will tie the thing, the two designs together as well. And 
in a way it's just four little strips between corners but there's a whole world in this space right you can spend a long time designing this little strip really well There are a few spirally elements like this. With also a kind of a circle in between with spokes connecting. I don't have that yet in my design, so maybe I can build that in. Maybe here, that's a big circle. Otherwise, things are getting quite full. Oh no, maybe up here. I I was not happy with this part, so maybe this will be a good way to resolve it. These are going on top. I'm getting a lot of side side lighting here. <laughs> It's almost time. I'm really sorry I have to leave early today. But I thought better do a little bit than nothing at all. So here we are. So next step, once this is all um, worked out as a sketch, and of course that means all the sides, like also I would design up here and at the bottom. Then I drop the opacity and put a layer on top and clean it up. So maybe 20%, 30, I think 20 is fine. And then zooming in closer and redrawing. If you want, you can turn on smoothing here. If your painting application or your arm <laughs> supports this feature, You can draw smoother curves. For this, actually, it's quite organic and quite um, maybe messy or alive in the clay. So I think this might even work against me to have two perfect lines. So I'll turn it off. I 
so I will rotate my canvas. If this was on paper, I would rotate my paper so that it's comfortable to draw these angles. And if you've done your sketch on paper and you have tracing paper, it can be a nice way to clean up by putting tracing paper on top of your sketch and then on the tracing paper do the clean version. Where are we? Okay, so when we zoom out, this will look much cleaner on the second version here. So maybe one or two minutes for questions. If you have any questions, please post them now. But I will have to run off in one or two minutes. This is always so tricky with one screen. Let me check questions here. Looks like no questions, small group today. So I hope this was somewhat interesting. I know it's super short, um, but yeah, this is what I'm working on at the moment. And I hope it gives you some ideas for how you can structure your own process as well. And with that, I will sign off, do groceries, and then hop in the car to drive back to the mountains. But I wish you all a wonderful week and see you next Monday. Take care. Have a great week. <laughs>